already know what is an earthquake. An earthquake is a sudden and intense shaking of the earth's surface. Now, during an earthquake, the energy is released in the form of waves and these are known as seismic waves. We have already studied about different types of seismic waves and we have already studied how an earthquake is measured. So now let us see what are the factors responsible for the occurrence of an earthquake. The first and the foremost factor is the movement of tectonic plates. This is the same factor that transformed the ancient world into a new one. See here we have the picture of our ancient world and this is how the ancient world looked like. In the ancient world, there was a supercontinent called Pangaea and there was a super ocean called Panthalassa. Gradually, with time, the ancient world transformed into the modern world and this is how our modern world looks. We have seven continents and five major oceans. So now let us see how the ancient world transformed into the new world due to movement of tectonic plates. We know the earth's crust is divided into several tectonic plates and these tectonic plates are not static but float on a molten material called magma present in the mantle. But why do these tectonic plates move? This is because the earth's interior is too hot and it heats up the materials lying above it. So the heated materials rise up on being lighter while the cooler materials sinks down to occupy the empty space. These materials that comes down are eventually again heated up by the earth's core and they again rise up. So this process continues in the form of a cycle and this is called convectional currents. This churning motion causes the tectonic plates to drift apart. Now, gravity also plays an important role in this process. Gravity acts more strongly or they push more strongly the cooler and denser plates while the hotter and lighter plates remains above. Thus, convectional currents and gravity go hand in hand and these two forces causes the tectonic plates to move. The movement of tectonic plates is quite similar to the movement of cars on roads. Sometimes the cars diverge or move apart. Similarly, if two tectonic plates diverge, then it is known as divergent plate boundary. Again, sometimes, unfortunately, two cars collide or crashed into one another. Similarly, if two tectonic plates move closer or collide with one another, then it is known as convergent plate boundary. In some cases also, we see that two cars swipe past each other when they move in two separate roads. So, if similarly two tectonic plates slide past one another, then it is known as transform plate boundary. Thus, we can see that the movement of tectonic plates is of three types. The first one is divergent plate boundary. In this case, two tectonic plates move in opposite direction or diverge. So, this is known as divergent plate boundary. The second type is convergent plate boundary. In this case, two tectonic plates come closer or collide with one another. So this is known as convergent plate boundary. And the third type is transform plate boundary. In this case, two tectonic plates slide past each other. And this is known as transform plate boundary. So the movement of tectonic plates in this manner causes stress on the earth's surface and energy is released in the form of waves and this induces earthquake. Thus movement of tectonic plates is an important cause of an earthquake around 95% 
of the earthquake is caused due to movement of tectonic plates. Apart from movement of tectonic plates, another important natural cause of an earthquake is volcanism. In this video, we can see that as two tectonic plates are colliding, it is creating pressure on the magma chamber. So the magma tries to escape to the earth's surface through cracks and leads to a massive volcanic eruption. This tremendous explosion of a volcano unsettles or destabilizes the earth's surface thereby causing an earthquake. Thus volcano is also an important cause of an earthquake. A massive volcanic eruption of Krakatoa situated in Indonesia in 1883 triggered a massive earthquake. The earthquake was so intense that its tremors were also felt in faraway places of Australia and Cape Horn, which is very far away and it is in South America. So even these faraway places was affected by this earthquake. This earthquake also produced large sea waves of tsunami which damaged the countries of Sumatra and Java. Thus, the volcanic eruption of Krakatoa caused a fatal earthquake. Now, before we move on, can you help me to answer this? A volcanic eruption of Dash in 1883 triggered an earthquake. Is it Tambora? Krakatoa, Stromboli or Fujiyama? Well, the correct answer is Krakatoa because in the previous slide we read that the volcanic eruption of Krakatoa in 1883 triggered a massive earthquake. Till now we have discussed that the natural factors like movement of tectonic plates and volcanism are responsible for causing earthquake. Another natural factor that is responsible for causing earthquake is isostatic balance or isostasy. Now, isostasy is a Greek word where isos means equal and stasi means stand still. So what does isostasy or isostatic balance means? It is a state of equilibrium between the earth's crust and mantle. So isostatic balance is the balance between two layers of the earth that is crust and mantle. But how is the balance between these two layers maintained? To understand this, we can consider the case of an iceberg floating on ocean. An iceberg floats on oceans because the iceberg is less dense than the ocean. Similarly, the crustal layer floats above mantle and the balance between these two layers depends on the density and thickness of crust. So any change in the density or thickness of crust affects the balance between these two layers and induces an earthquake. Let's see how. We know the natural forces like rivers, wind, glaciers, etc. erode the landforms when they flow over them. These eroded sediments are deposited on the ocean floor. Due to continuous deposition of sediments, the oceanic crust thickens while the continental crust becomes thinner. So, this disrupts the balance between crust and mantle and due to disruption in the balance of crust and mantle, that is due to disruption of isostatic balance, it induces earthquakes. Thus, earthquakes are formed due to disruption of isostatic balance. So till now we have discussed about the natural factors that causes earthquake like movement of tectonic plates, volcanism or disruption of isostatic balance or isostatic imbalance. 
but let me tell you that earthquake is not always an act of god earthquake can also be caused due to man made activities so now let us learn about those man made activities that causes earthquake human beings conduct several activities for their own benefit for instance human beings dig deep mines on the earth's surface to extract minerals and this activity is called mining again man also blasts dynamites to construct roads and bridges dams are constructed to obstruct the flow of a river again nuclear explosions are conducted to test the purity of a bomb now these anthropogenic activities like mining blast of dynamites construction of dams and nuclear explosion causes stress on the earth's surface and induces seismic activities thus these anthropogenic activities are responsible for the formation of earthquake here we have an example of a human induced earthquake koena dam is situated on river krishna in the state of maharashtra this region was considered a stable region but an incident that took place in 1967 shattered this long held belief in 1967 this dam induced an earthquake of 6.3 magnitude but how this earthquake was caused what happened is that the water present in the reservoir of this dam exceeded its carrying capacity so excessive water present in the dam caused stress on the earth's surface and due to this stress an earthquake of 6.3 magnitude was triggered and this earthquake was very deadly because it took away many lives and caused immense damage to life and property so here we saw how a man made activity triggered an earthquake so in today's video we studied about the natural factors that caused earthquake and the natural factors are movement of tectonic plates volcanism and isostatic imbalance We also read about the man-made factors that triggers earthquake and the man-made activities are mining, construction of dams, blast of dynamites and nuclear explosion. So in short these are the factors that causes earthquake. In our next video we will study about the effects and measures that should be taken during an earthquake. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, but it's rewarding too. So register for free now.